Handsome Dan, once again, welcome inside McMinn County High School as we get set for the boys' side of the District 5 4A uh, tournament action. And the consolation game is the first one we have on the tip-off here tonight between the Howard Hustling Tigers and the McMinn County Cherokees. Both of these teams come in as the top two seeds, but unfortunately found their way into the consolation bracket. Most people probably, when the bracket came out and McMahon was the top and Howard the second, you would have probably put good money that they would have been facing off again against each other after playing two times in the regular season. But most people would have probably had them penciled into the championship game. Unfortunately, though, both of them were upset by two Bradley County teams. Walker Valley Mustangs upset the Cherokees on Saturday afternoon. That was a 55-67 to 67 game where Walker Valley won by 12. And then Howard lost to Cleveland for the second time this year by 15, 60 to 45. And that's something about this Howard team, Chris. Skidmore to my left, we've seen them twice. We made the trip down there. We came uh, here and broadcasted from home when McMahon played Howard. That's the only team that has beat McMinn County twice in the district in the regular season. Only two losses McMinn County had in the regular season. But then Howard lost to three teams on their home floor that McMinn County swept. Yeah, it's just uh – you know, we should, we actually had them here, had them beat, and then gave up a couple cheap cheap baskets there towards the end to, to lose. I think I think we should come out and play like we've been playing. I mean, except for the last the last game. Yeah, I was gonna say, like let's that. not repeat. Yeah, the... don't repeat none of that. I really think that uh, that uh, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. <laughs> Too many distractions Coach, going Coach on. Coach Rogers walking by here. People walking by. you got a big yeah. fan club here. Yeah, but, that's, that's it. I'm but Coach Casey talked to us after that game or at halftime of the girls' game the other night about the Walker Valley loss, and they just kind of got away from their fundamentals. Rebounding was an issue for them. Just playing defense was another one. They had a lot of good looks on offense, just couldn't get anything to fall for them. So they struggled to get scoring going, and Walker Valley came out motivated. Well, you gotta you got to wonder how motivated – both these teams are both being one and two playing the Constellation game. I mean, it does mean a lot. It means who you play next round. So, I, I would be motivated to win this game because you're going to be playing probably a lesser opponent yep. than what you would be if you're four. So, that that is the key. This game, a lot of people think Constellation game, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It does this year because of the fact on the District 6 side, which is the opposite district in the Region 3 action, there was an upset they have four teams only, so they automatically go to the region. But their fourth-seeded uh, Shelbyville team upset their number one-seeded Franklin County. And so that would be a Shelbyville team that's only won five games. So that's wow. who the winner of this game will go to play Shelbyville. And so that would be a huge opportunity to extend the season because the next game on Saturday evening will be a win-or-go-home matchup. Um, so that will be key. The Lady Cherokees lost a heartbreaker last night against Bradley Central. They'll play Friday night in a winner go home game. And so both of these uh, teams here on the guy side, though, looking to extend their season and get some momentum after a couple of losses in the upset here in the tournament. It will be Cleveland and Walker Valley playing for an all Bradley County District Championship game after this one. Yeah, I'll be going home to watch but, Kentucky. I'm not going to stay and watch that. <laughs> I, I can imagine you're not going to. Before that <laughs> loss against uh, Walker Valley, Men County had beat Walker Valley the week before on senior night by 14 on this same floor. But then the Mustangs had flipped the script on that one. And before that, the Cherokees had rattled off uh, seven wins in a row, so they had seen a good streak come to an end. Their last loss before that was against Howard here on this floor by two, 56 to 54. Back on the 28th of January, that one went to overtime. Ty Runyon led the Cherokees with 15 points. Tucker Monroe had 13. On the other side, it was Mark Greer with 18. Jaden Jenkins for Howard had 14. And Jalen Taylor had 12. That was their double figure scoring. So David Evans also had a nine for the Cherokees and a quick and hotly contested game, and we expect to see that here tonight between two up-and-down teams. Neither one of them like to really slow the ball down much and expect a, expect a lot of athletic basketball being played here. Back on December 14th, down at Howard, the score indicates a nine-point loss by the Cherokees, a three-possession game there, but it wasn't really that far out of reach. It was close, questionable calls. We'll yeah, agree with that one. Many of those. Uh, officiating was suspect, to say the least, and hate to say it that way, but it was. 
but the Cherokees lost that one 79 to 70. Ty Runyon, Trent Peak had 17. Tucker Monroe had 16 in that one. Nobody else is really close in the scoring for that. But then the three on the other side for Howard, the Hustling Tigers was Freeman with 25. Jenkins had 24 and Greer had 22. So they've got to know where those role, those star players are for Howard and keep them in check a little bit here tonight. Yeah. I think Hester's going to have a big night tonight. I don't know why. I just have a – He's been playing good have here he's of late, big so night. hopefully yeah. he will. The Tigers under uh, James Talley, they come in 22-8 and eight overall. They finished the district 9-3. and three. They are 5-5 five and five on the road, but they have picked up a win here at McMinn County High School. McMinn County under Randy Casey in his first season, assisted by Jay Johnson, Drew Hahn, and Seth Schaefer, finished the regular season or – fin- or currently stand 20-10, and 10, finished the district regular season at 10-2, and two, and they are 9-3 and three now on this court after they dropped the loss to Walker Valley on Saturday afternoon. So we get set for this con- consolation matchup. The Cherokees will be the home team wearing the home white uniforms, gold numerals trimmed in black. Howard in all red, gold numerals trimmed in red and gold as well. As they are the one and two seeds coming into this matchup. And they've got the official scores booked out. And officials checking that and trying to work through some of that. But well. And being the first game. The crowd's still starting to file in here at McMinn County High School, and so yeah, it's really quiet in here. It now. Compared to the last couple of weeks, but we're going to take a 90-second break and then bring you the starting lineups back in 90 seconds. My thoughts are with you, holding hands with your heart. See you only through dark and love. You remember how the new love was here Here at McMinn County High School, Jared Wright, Chris Skidmore, and we'll look at the starting lineups now. For the Howard Hustling Tigers, it'll be number one, Mark Greer, the senior guard. Number three, Christian Holland, the junior guard. Number four, Jaden Jenkins, the senior guard. Number five, Norman Freeman, the senior guard. And number 10, Lyquise Thomas, sophomore guard. On the other side, four, the Cherokees. Under Randy Casey in his first season, he's got this team playing very well. They will start double zero, Hayden Smith, the 6'1 junior forward. Number two, Davion Evans, the 5'9 junior guard, averaging eight points a game. Number five, Ty Runyon, the 5'10 senior guard and the leader of this team. 16 points is his average, five assists, six rebounds as well. Number 15, Caden Hester, the 5'11 junior guard. And 33, Tucker Monroe, the 6'1 junior guard, averaging about 16 points a game as well. Again, this one is a matchup in the consolation bracket and an opportunity to go on the road and play Shelbyville if you win this one. If not, you're going to face off against Coffee County, who is one of the top teams. As we get set for this one, looking back through history, these teams have really only squared off in the region and sub-state. McMinn County has only picked up one win. That was back in November of 2016 by the records I could find, one and six against Howard. Howard has won the last two here in the regular season as we get set for the tip-off. McMinn County gets it, and they'll be moving from our left to our right here. 
And Ben County has averaged 55 points, Howard 56 points in these matchups. Over the years, go all the way back to the 70s, the first meeting in a sub-state game they had. And Ben County with it, around the perimeter. Hester has it, top of the key, now hands it off to Runyon. Runyon drive, dishes right back to, right. Uh, to Tucker Monroe. That's a good start. And that's a perfect start for the Cherokees, up 3-0 off the feed from Runyon to Monroe. Now Cherokees pick him up right across half court. Looked like a back court there against Jenkins, but no call. He stepped back across the line instead of Tallin with it from the far wing. Tallin calling it out. Gets it back up to Freeman. Freeman brings it to the near side, hands it off to Greer. Greer between the circles, guarded by Hester. As Chris alluded to, Hester's been playing very well in the last several games we've called. Has really stepped up. A lot of stats not showing up on the stat sheet, but hustle plays, keeping plays alive is the big thing. Jenkins in the lane, floater no good. Long rebound is corralled there by Runyon. Runyon pushing it up the floor. Euro step way up on the left side, and he's going to get fouled on this shot. But Ming County is going to get the first foul on Thomas, his first, team first. And so Ty Runyon steps to the line. He spent a lot of time at the free throw line this postseason. Coach yeah. Casey has j joked with us but been serious that he, caught, he could have spent a lot more time at the free throw line this year. He didn't get a lot of calls. He makes the first one. A minute 10 gone so far in this eight-minute quarter. Second one is good for Ty. And they're going to open full court pressure. Not surprising to see that. Runyon's going to guard Jenkins. Jenkins gets by him, goes up on the right side. Floater on the baseline, no good. Ball is pulled down. That's going to be a jump ball. And... Possession arrow will give it, or at least keep it with Howard on this end of the floor to the left of us. Court side here at Midman County High School. Now Jenkins gets by Runyon who slapped at it. Little ball fake. Now they kick it out into the corner to Thomas. Thomas trying to get it to Greer. Hester right there with him. They're going to force a turnover there. Hester has it in transition. Trying to get to the low block. Kick out to Runyon. Now the pass is intercepted there by Greer. Coming up the floor is Freeman. Evans pokes <laughs> it away from Freeman. Now Hester in transition up to Smith. Smith going to lay it in over the front of the rim. The Cherokees coming out fired up here. Lead 7-0. Two minutes played here in the first quarter. And you think they're reeling off the loss to Walker Valley. It's another thing coming. Smith just takes it off the hands there of Holland. Monroe in the far corner up to Evans. Now top of the key. Runyon with it. Goes around the left side of a screen by Smith. Almost loses the can handle on it, regains it, gets it to Monroe. Yeah, lost it twice. <laughs> Good ball handling by Ty Runyon. I had a chat with him last night during halftime of the girls' game. Evans comes around to the top of the key. Feed baseline jumper from Smith is no good. Now Evans tries to pick it from Holland. Holland stays with it. Transition. Jenkins reverse layup. Gets a good shot. The hustling Tigers on the board, and it was a good take by Jenkins. Monroe going to take a deep three. Cannot get the bounce over the front of the rim. Cherokees missed opportunity there. Now the hustling Tigers back it up. Get it to Jenkins. Score 7-2. 5-0-5 to play here in the first quarter. High screen there from Thomas. 15-footer knocked down there by Jenkins. It's a one-possession game here. The Cherokees with the ball, though. Runyon sends it back up to Evans. It's a game of runs. Cherokees opened on the 7-0 run. Howard answering back-to-back -back buckets. Now they're going to get a hand check underneath. And that one's going to be on Holland, his first, team second. And Monroe to key it in underneath. Gets it into Evans. Evans, top of the key, sends it back to Monroe in the near corner. Monroe's second three is good for him. He's two for three from the line. Four and a half. And oh, now there was foul. no foul. Who's the foul on? They're going to get it, I believe, on Davion. Nope, it's going to be on Ty Runyon. Wow. That's his first team first. I didn't see that. And so Jenkins, the man that has all four points, number four on his jersey, will look to add a fifth and sixth point here for Howard. First free throw was nothing but net there for Jenkins. Cuts the deficit in half, 10 to five, Cherokees leading. Second one is the same way. Good looking shot at the line there by Jenkins. 
Jaden Jenkins, one of five seniors on this Howard team. McMinn County with two seniors. Hester feeds it into Runyon. Runyon, little floater over the front of the rim is good. He's got four. 12 to six. Now trying to answer right back, and it is Freeman that does it for Howard. As soon as you look down, Howard's already back at the other end, and now this one's going to be a foul against McMinn County's Caden Hester. I'll tell you one thing, they're uh, taking it out. No matter we score or what, they're taking it out of the net and running with it. Yep. Both teams are trying to push it. Greer with it, guarded by Hester. They get it across on the far side over to Jenkins. 12 to 8 the score. Missed jumper there. Rebound comes off to Evans. Evans up to Smith. Smith, right side on the layup is good. He's got four. Six-point game again. And now they're going to get a, what they call there, travel? They're going to get a travel on Freeman. Well, maybe, yeah, I don't know. And so number 32, Will Benton, the yeah, big Will's getting there early freshman no. center will check in, along with number 11, Trent Peak, the 5'9 sophomore guard. Howard gets a sub in there. It's going to be 14, Najee Labu, the junior forward. Pass over to Runyon, goes inside of the lane, throws it up. Ball's tipped around. Now Hester able to corral it, well, momentarily. But he's going to get fouled anyway, and that one's going to be against Jenkins. That's going to be Jenkins first, team third. Big Will play good there or not. Now he's getting a little uh, early yep. run here. That's good. Gives Mink County the size coming in. Just a freshman has been outstanding. He goes to post up on the left block. Now they get it to Runyon out front. Runyon has Holland right there on his hip. High screen from Benton. Benton rolls off the screen. Runyon pulls up the three and drills it. Ty Runyon knocks it down for his seventh point of the game. 17 to eight, 315 to play here in the first quarter. Holland with the point. Working against Tucker Monroe, calling for a screen. Labou trying to set it on the right side. Benton helps on the screen. They've switched off again. Benton now guarding Jenkins. Hester helps out. Ball's on the ground. Benton dives for it. Get on the floor, but Howard picks it up, and they're going to be a travel here by Freeman. Shuffled his feet a little too early right in front of the official on the near side. In under three minutes, Cherokees can look to make this a double-digit lead. Is now number two, Jalen Sexton, the senior guard, will check in, replacing Holland. Runyon going to pick it up. Now get it back to Peak. Peak crosses midcourt, feeds it over to Monroe. Monroe's got an open look on the right wing. This one all the way in and pops back out, and this one will go, well, it's going to be a foul on the Cherokee on the rebound. That one's going to be on Trent Peak, his first, team third. So both teams committing some early cheap fouls battling for the ball. They could have flipped a coin on who they called that foul on. It was like four, <laughs> two of ours and three of theirs. They could have, it's whoever they, you know, looked at, I guess. Get the jersey numbers confused. Yeah. Now it's going to be Sexton with it on the near side. Hester got a piece of it, but couldn't get it deflected enough. Runyon picks up Sexton. Now Freeman going baseline, layup on the left side, comes off the left side of the rim. Tucker Monroe with the rebound. Peak pushing the pace. Now trying to go inside, and they're going to get a jump ball. It'll stay with McMinn County, though. Davion Evans coming back to the scorer's table. He'll replace Ty Runyon, give him a breather. But it'll be, uh, yes, Monroe to inbound underneath, far side. Pass is uh, intercepted there by Jenkins, trying to get it out to Evans. Jenkins layup on the right side, does get the roll to fall. He's got eight points. 17-10, score 2-15 to play. Cherokee seen full court pressure. Now they turn it over. Trent Peak and Davion Evans cannot get it across midcourt. Throw it out of bounds, far side. That one-hand pass again, he, he couldn't control it. Saw that in the girls' game the other night, McMinn County against Cleveland. Cleveland got under a lot of issues, and now McMinn County is going to pick up a foul here against Hester. Cleveland was doing a lot of one-handed passing, a lot of turnovers for the Cleveland Lady Raiders. Hester's going to pick up his second. He'll check out as Ty Runyon will come back in. Side out of bounds coming for Howard. It'll be Sexton to inbound. It gets it in to Jenkins. Jenkins is close to going back court. He circled around too quickly. Jenkins working against Evans. Goes to the right side of the lane. 
Will Benton cuts him off, and they're going to get a travel there on the far side of the lane. Good defense. Will Benton's been, as a freshman, he's he's got a bright future. He's Coach a, Casey talked about it the other night. He's a big body, plus he's got really long arms. He get, you know, he get that little fall, fall away he was trying to shoot right there. He couldn't even see the goal. <laughs> now the pass comes up to Benton on the near side. Skip pass over to Evans quickly. Three-pointer up by Evans is nothing but net there. Davion Evans has his first field goal of the evening. And it's doubled up 20 to 10. Oh. Cherokee's in front. That's a bad call. Now they're going to get a shooting foul. And that one's going to be on Will Benton. Awful call. Team fifth. I'll tell you what Coach was talking about there now. I've, I've watched some JV games and stuff, and the Big Will wants to stand out there and shoot threes. And uh, I don't think they want him standing out there shooting threes. Hey, but when you have a – well, I hate to mention this, but Carl Anthony Towns went in the – NBA three-point shooting contest as a Kentucky guy. Former Wildcat, yeah. Yeah. It, uh, it makes all big men want to shoot from outside more than they already do. 20 to 11 the score, 134 to play here in the first quarter still. Cherokee's in front. Freeman went one of two at the line there. Midcourt, Monroe gets it over to Benton on the right wing. Top of the key, it comes back out to Runyon. Pass over to Monroe, baseline. 15-footer, short. Rebound comes down into the hands there of Sexton, they clear it out over to Freeman. Now Holland back into the game. Running shot on the right side of the floor is no good, but the call's going to bail him out. And that's that's going to be the second on big man Will Benton. Wow. Team six, Hayden Smith coming back to the scores table as Holland steps to the line here for the first time this evening. Also, Daylon Spradlin at the scores table as well. And this is the first one. Bradlin number four, the 5'7 five, seven, five, seven freshman guard. Monroe and Benton will check out for the Cherokees. And it'll be Christian Holland. Trying to cut it to an eight-point game, and he does. 1.14 to play. Went one for two at the line. Runyon up to Smith, but the pass is intercepted by Freeman. Now the outlet. He's chased down by Davion Evans, who oh, flips wow. it out. Now, McMinn County ended up kicking it right towards us. And Chris may have used his soccer skills or some kind of action to deflect that one, but McMinn County just couldn't. Davion Evans made a great play on the ball trying to save it. And Runyon and Smith could not corral it for the Cherokees. 57 seconds to play here in the first quarter. And it'll be Sexton top of the key with it, working against Smith. Goes left side of the lane. A double pump on the shot. Missed it. Ball's tipped out into the hands of Trent Peak. He's going to circle back around, get past two defenders. Looks to his left, but then goes all the way. Floater on the left side of the lane is no good by Trent Peak. 35 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Far side of the floor, it's Sexton with it. Sexton feeds the high post to Freeman. Freeman. Traveled with it, cut off by Runyon, now feeds it out to Holland. Holland's floater on the baseline, no good. Runyon comes away with it. Good defense there by Hayden Smith to cut it off. 18 seconds to go. Spradlin now to Smith. And Coach Casey's wanting to take the last shot with 10 seconds to go now and an eight-point lead, 20 to 12. Evans with it on the right wing. Feed to Hayden Smith, lay up on the right side of a nice little screen and then a the, the roll by Hayden Smith. And they fire up a shot at the buzzer, but it's no good. Cherokees will take a double-digit lead, 22-12, to 12, into the second quarter off a nice bounce pass and a feed from Davion Evans to Hayden Smith. We'll be back from McMinn County High School in 60 seconds.
action. This District 5 4A consolation game between the one seated McMinn County Cherokees and the two seated Howard Hustling Tigers. Both teams had hoped they were playing at the 7 30 tip off for the championship as Holland gets the bucket inside for the Hustling Tigers. But they fell victim to losses against Bradley County's Walker Valley and Cleveland teams. Now they're going to get a foul underneath on Howard. This one's going to be on Freeman, his first, team fourth. 22 to 14, the score. Jared Wright, Chris Skidmore here courtside. Evans with it between the circles. He backs up near midcourt. Gets it to Runyon off the bounce. Guarded there by Sexton. Hayden Smith with a big screen. Now the roll. The shot up by Runyon. Missed it. Hayden Smith, a big offensive board. Kicks it out to Trent Peak. Three-pointer by Trent Peak is no good. Runyon battling Labou, but can't knock it down. Or pull it in, sorry. Now in transition, Hayden Smith steals it underneath. Pass out to Runyon. Cherokees have a two-on-one break if they can push it. Bounce pass over to Monroe was behind him. Kick out to Evans. Evans now drives inside. Runyon, a little reverse layup. Cannot get the English, and that one's going to be an over the back there on Hayden Smith on the rebound, the seventh team foul. So McMinn County, a couple of missed opportunities there. Hayden Smith had got a big offensive rebound to keep that possession alive earlier. That's going to be a one and one opportunity. Still 22 to 14 the score. Holland back to the line, one for two there today. Coach Casey going to try to work some of the official there. <laughs> or maybe just asking if it was a push in the back or something, but and Hayden Smith. One and, first end of the one and one is good there by Holland. 22-15 the score. 6.56 remaining in the first half. Holland taking his time at the line. Second free throw is up. Comes off the front of the rim. Hayden Smith with a big rebound there. And now McMinn County turns it over. Evans is trying to come out and get it, and Smith and him could not communicate, and that ball sells to the Cherokee bench. So now Greer coming back in for the Hustling Tigers. He'll replace Freeman. Now the inbound comes from Jenkins. Gets it into Greer. He's got running on him. Give and go back to Jenkins. Jenkins lay up on the right side. No good. Goes out of bounds off of Labou. And Cherokees avoid that one there. Really need a good offensive possession. Looking for their first field goal. Almost two and a half minutes into the second quarter. Cherokees have it peak and Evans in the front court over to Runyon. Eyes up the three-pointer, takes it. Too strong off the backside, and this one goes out of bounds off of Howard. Main County maybe hit a little bit of a slump here, struggling to find the bottom of the net. Yeah, I don't think Tyler's ready to shoot that ball. He kind of hesitated there. Usually when you hesitate, it's not a good thing. He was so open, I think he had to he second-guessed himself. Now it's Monroe in the right side. He hits it, gets bumped anyway. But Tucker Monroe has his third three-pointer of the ballgame. He's got nine. That's back to a 10-point game for the Cherokees. 6.20 to play, 25-15. Now the ball is poked away by Holland. Runyon and Smith had him double-teamed, and they're going to get double zero. Hayden Smith with the foul. They had him right here. It's going to be a one-and-one one for Holland. They were right here in front of us, and Will Benton's coming back. He's got two fouls, so both big men with two fouls. And Holland's going back to the line. Went one for two there a minute ago. Coach Casey pleading with his guys, don't bring your arms down, as they had the double team and had Holland stop, but as soon as they Yeah, he was cornered over him, here. He makes the first free throw. He's got five points. Back to a nine-point game, 6-13 to play. WJSQ, WLAR, Athens, Tennessee. Jared Wright, Chris Skidmore here from McMinn County High School. Holland goes two for two at the line this trip. Evans bringing it up the floor along with Runyon, who has it across the time strike. Pass over to Monroe. Now near corner, it's Peak with it. Back up to Evans. McMinn County seeing a 2-3 zone being shown. Oh, nope, they're in a man-to-man. It looked 2-3 there for a moment. Howard in a 
trying to deflect it, and oh. there it is from Evans. The pass is intercepted. Greer oh, good job, way up. Davion. Staying with it, though, is Holland. Holland's layup on the left side, no good. Ball is saved by Tucker Monroe. Now Will Benton battling for it, getting hammered everywhere. Evans able to get it from Will Benton. Good play by the freshman. Runyon to Monroe on the extra pass. Three-pointer by Monroe is good. He's got four three-pointers and leads all scores with 12. And it's an 11-point game. And Howard wants to I take I think Coach Casey out. just gave Will Benton a kiss. I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, McMinn County leads it 28-17. to 17. We'll be back in 30 seconds. CRCC to me is um, a calling that God placed on my life to really step out in faith. Um, on something that I didn't think I could do, and it's been amazing to see how God's worked through it. Uh, CRCC stands for Crossroads Community Church, uh, uh, but we're a church that our vision is to be a life-giving church in our community. Uh, We do that through helping people know God, find freedom, discover their purpose, and then go make a difference. And so that's what we're doing every week, is helping people discover their jam and go make a difference. Back here at McMinn County High School, where Tucker Monroe is leading all scorers with 12 points. And he's doing it from behind the arc. He's knocked down four of them. They lead the Hustling Tigers 28-17 with under five and a half to go. Holland crosses midcourt with it for Howard. Looking to his left, and he gets it over to Sexton, guarded by Trent Peak. Man-to-man defense shown by the Cherokees. Peak right there with Sexton. Hard layup, a lot of contact, no whistle, but Will Benton pulls down another rebound right there. Ming County battling hard trying to overcome the regular season sweep, and they're going to get a jump ball. This one will stay with the Cherokees. Will Benton, big man inside. That was a just tough catch for a big dude. Yeah. They collapsed on him. He tried to get out of it. But it was a very low pass, too. That's what Coach Casey just signaled out. Said too much traffic right there for that pass. 4.50 to play here in the second quarter. Evans with it out front. Battle of the twos, him against Sexton. Over oh, there is Monroe with it. 15 foot jumper, no good. Will Benton with a big rebound. Put back up is good by Will Benton. He's got his first points of the ball game. Now the feed turnover from Sexton to Jenkins sells off his fingertips, and Howard looks to be rattled more than we have seen this Howard ball club Uh-oh. in the two games. 32 is about the same same size as Will. There's a this little bit be of a height, little battle here. Height advantage to Will Benton on yeah, that one. Yeah, a little bit. That is 32, Davion Dupree, the junior forward. He had started the two previous games against McMinn County, but did not get the start tonight. 30 to 17, the score. Evans with it out front, looking around. Now a drive and a dish over to Benton. Benton gets fouled on the layup, though. Good job. That one will be a shooting, well, should be. I think the officials are conferring. They are going to confirm it's going to be a shooting foul. That one's going to be on number one, Mark Greer, his first team fifth. And Will Benton, the big man, stepping to the line. He is doing an outstanding job. Hester coming back, Will Benton. He's actually got a good shot. I mean, I know why he wants – I mean, I can see why he wants to shoot threes, but he's going to make he's going to make his money down low, man, in his career. He don't need to be out there shooting on three. I played in the post when I played back in the day, and I can tell you every big man wants to shoot it outside. Benton misses the second one. But Trent Peake gets the offensive rebound, and then the Cherokees throw it away. He's sailed off the fingertips of Ty Runyon. They're trying to clear it out. All those big guys want to shoot threes and play quarterback. Yep. (laughs) There is no doubt about that. Inbounds comes to Greer, guarded there by Runyon. Don't foul, don't foul. Four minutes to play. Pass deflected by Monroe, but Sexton ends up with it. Now Sexton gets fouled on the layup. Let's see, that's either going to be Trent Peak or Will Trent Benton. Peake. Will Benton's Will going to Benton? pick up his third. That's got to be Peak. I, I thought it was going to be on Peak as well. Coach Casey did his greet as well. And assistant Coach Jay Johnson asking if it was Will that smacked him on the arm. He says yes. I swear, dude. Sexton makes his first free throw. 31-18 the score, 3.56 to play. Carson Black coming to the scorer's table along with Davion Evans. No basket. They're going to wave off the basket. Lane violation. You don't see that very often. Wow. Far official called that one, so that wipes a point off the board. 31-18 the score. Oh, I need to. 
Yeah, we're going to wipe it off our stat sheets as well. Monroe gets the inbound. Carson Black, number 10, the 5'10 junior guard, into the game. Evans with the ball. Just ran over by Jenkins. Now a reverse layup by Carson oh, Black. Is Carson? Good. Carson Black gets his first points just a couple of minutes into his playing time. Now Sexton with a running floater off the glass. No good. Ball is taken away. Now Evans with it. Good defense there by the Cherokees. 3.28 to play, 33-18 the score. Evans takes it to the right side. He's going to take a shooting foul. That one's going to be the second on Mark Greer, team sixth. And Davion Evans is going to step to the line. And this Cherokee team, Chris, is looking a lot better than they did against the oh, Longer Valley yeah, team. Oh, yeah, 100% better. 100% better. Evans steps to the line, looking for his fourth and fifth point of the night. Misses the front end of this that two was shot ball. Ball. <laughs> Yeah. I think it slipped out of his hands or something. Freeman checks back in for Howard, along with number 30, Jalen Sandifer, the senior guard. Evans' second free throw was nothing but net there. Made up for it. 34-18. 320 to play. Full court pressure. Evans guarding Holland. They're going to get Evans with the foul there. And that's going to be a two shot second, foul. Is that his second foul? Uh, that's Davion's first. Oh, okay. And that's going to be a two shot free throw and the double bonus for the Howard Hustling Tigers here. So Holland, he's spent a lot of time here at the line already. Yeah. Four of six so far. He's got his seventh point off the first make. Three fourteen to play. Second one is up and comes off the right side. Carson Black with the rebound, but it's poked away and he's fouled on the rebound by Jenkins. That's going to be Jenkins' second foul. Team seventh. And so Carson Black's going to get an opportunity at the free throw line on the other end. 3-12 to play in this one, and both teams already in the bonus and in the first half. So there might be a lot of free throw shooting going on the way the whistles have been going here in the first half. Greer back into the game. Jenkins will exit with two. Greer's also got two, though. At the line is Carson Black. Front end of the one-on-one one is good. Shot Carson. Nice shooting touch there by Carson Black. Young man that has battled a lot here late in the season, losing his father and playing through all those emotions with that and had the support of this team around him. Hats off to Carson Black and what he has been doing. Makes both of them here. Now the pass is deflected oh, there by Ty Runyon at midcourt. Him and Carson Black had Freeman double teamed. Good defense right there. Black will shift back on to Sandifer. Now Holland bringing it up the floor against Evans. Three minutes to play exactly in the first half. This District 5-4A consolation matchup between the one and two seed. Main County won the regular season. Now Sandifer misses the layup on the left side. Carson Black with a big rebound right there. He's got his second of the night. Evans across the time strike, hands it off to Monroe. Guarded by Freeman, gets to the left side of the lane. Shovel pass outside to Runyon. Runyon around a screen from Carson Black. It's blocked by Sandifer. And now coming away with it is Freeman. Freeman pushing the pace. Stripped by Evans on the way up. And then he walks with it. Davion Evans, good hustle play, gets back and prevents that easy bucket. He's done a lot of those tonight, a lot of strips. And he's such a quickly, quick guard. He can get back and he yeah, keeps his hands down low. And if you're a guy bringing the ball from a low angle, it's a dangerous play against Davion Evans. That's Reminds a, me a lot of Addy Smith on the girls' side. That's a big guy. You want you usually call him a gnat. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> right there, just annoying you. Now a bounce pass from Evans to Black. Black tries to throw it to Monroe as he was about to step out of bounds and pass too hard and goes out of bounds. So they that's turn a, it right back over. That's an amazing pass and play if he catches it and lays it up. But that's oh, yeah. A, that's a hard one to handle for sure. Pass for Sexton over to – now Holland blocked there underneath by Caden Hester was Freeman's layup. It'll stay with the Hustling Tigers out of bounds underneath, though. Good job by Caden Hester to block that one with two fouls. 
Back in will come Thomas for the Hustling Tigers. He'll replace Freeman. Inbounds from Greer to Sandifer. Back up left wing, it comes to Sexton. Working against Monroe, goes behind his back, gets to the left side of the block. Layup is good there by Sexton. 36 to 21, Cherokee still lead. They've never trailed in this ball game. Runyon goes around the screen from Black. Layup on the left side is good for Ty Runyon. He's got nine. 38-21. Runyon guarded Sexton very closely. About forced the turnover. Now they get it. The Runyon steps on the baseline. It'll stay with the Hustling Tigers. 124 to play in this first half. 17-point lead for the Cherokees. Started this game on a 7-0 run. They have never looked back. Pass comes up to Greer. Hester right there with him with two fouls. Got to be careful. Greer gets by the screen. Now layup on the right side is up and good there by Sexton. He's got five points. 38-23, 1-10 to play. In the second quarter, Monroe with it across the time stripe. Monroe goes left side of the floor. Looking for some help. Bounce pass back out to Runyon. They're going to take the last shot is what I just heard Coach Casey say. 55 seconds to play. They're going to hold it and keep it away from Howard. Try to take this double-digit lead into the locker room and extend it. Lead by 15. Monroe gets it over to Evans. And it's uh, Holland and Thomas up here guarding them closely. Clock now down to 32 seconds. And again, if I've said it once, I've said it 100 times, a shot clock in high school would make this impossible to do. Yeah. Running now with it between the circles. They're going to just keep it out here. 20 seconds to play in the first half. Evans gets it back. Evans working against Holland, gets it right back to Runyon. Bounce pass back to Evans. They feed it over to Runyon. Clock now down to eight. Runyon takes it, missed it. Black puts a shot up and got fouled, but no call. On the rebound, now Holland in transition is going to get fouled by Evans on the layup here. That's going to be the 11th on McMinn County. That's going to send Holland back to the line. McMinn County had a good look. Ty Runyon's layup had come off. Carson Black had tried to put it back up and got deflected, really got fouled. Spradlin coming back in. Evans with two fouls. Early foul trouble for both teams as Holland misses this one. Spradlin will return for Evans. And Holland will step back to the strike. Second one is good for Holland. He's got eight. 38-24. That's how we're going to end the half as McMinn County couldn't get it going. Still up by 14, man. Still up by 14. That's not a problem. Especially against the team that has been the Achilles heel for McMinn County this year. Howard was the only team to beat them in the district play in the regular season. And it has been all Cherokees after starting on a 7-0 run and then not looking back. They lead it 38-24 to at half, up by 14. We'll be back from McMinn County High School in two minutes. At Simmons Bank, we back.
Valley High School. Jared Wright, Chris Skidmore were at halftime of the boys' consolation game in District 5-4A. And it has been a good one for Cherokee fans. They opened this game on a 7-0 run and then led 22-12 at the end of the first quarter. And then Howard battling back a little bit there in the second quarter. Got 12 more points, but the Cherokees added 16 to take this 38-24 lead into the locker room at the halftime. And it looks like a much different game than the first two games against Howard where McMinn is playing a little bit more in control and a little bit more than what we have seen against other district opponents outside of the two Howard games we covered. Oh, but yeah. It still two more quarters to go, so anything can happen. And I'm sure Coach Casey is relaying that message to his team in the locker room. But we're going to take a minute to talk to someone that reluctantly I think may have come over here. But we got her over here, and that's Miss Addie Smith has joined us off a, uh, a tough game last night. We'll talk about that in a minute. But um, – Addie Smith is one of the three seniors on this girls' basketball team and has been a very influential part of this team. And one thing that I've I've already told Coach Monroe is, I know she went and got you over here, Addie, but your defensive presence is going to be a huge void next year that somebody else is going to have to step up. So let's talk about this. You've signed to go play soccer at Lee University. You're repping the sweatshirt here this evening, so kudos to you on getting that opportunity. Um, What – is it your soccer game that has helped the basketball game, or is it kind of a mixture of both? Because it's your speed, and Hallie Hansford's like this as well. You all create a lot of issues on the defensive end. Uh, I think it's both. Playing soccer carries on into basketball season, and being, like, pumped up and ready for it just carries on. And I think that's where I focus mostly on my defense when we play. <laughs> You've got a knack for kind of trailing the play, mm-hmm. letting the offensive player think they're in the clear, mm-hmm. and just coming out of nowhere and poking it away. Is that something you've always had or just something you've kind of developed? I've you've... always done that since I was little. I love tipping the ball from players. I like to make it think like I'm kind of slow and then just catch up to them. It's it's unreal. It's, it's really been a turning point in several games where – Teams have it on a transition play, and they think, oh, I've got an easy layup, and here comes number one out of nowhere, poking it away and stealing it. Um, let's talk a little bit about the Cleveland game, and I have to talk about this because it was the semifinal game, second chance at, uh, opportunity at beating Cleveland for the second year in a row to get to the finals. But it was kind of similar. I believe you went out last year with an injury in the Cleveland game down at Cleveland, came back, helped the team pick up a upset win. You did the same thing. Is it just something you got to get knocked out of the game for a minute? I against called Cleveland? it right before the game started. I said, it's going to be the same as last year. I said, we're going to come in after getting beat twice by them. I said, someone's going to get hurt, and we're going to come back in the game, and we're going to win it. Unfortunately, it was you, but yeah, you yeah. did come back in and make, help make a difference in that one and, and beat Cleveland for the second year in a row. And let's talk a little bit about last night. Nothing to hang your head about. I know it's very upsetting because you had – Bradley Central so close. Do you think there was anything different you all could have done? Because you were right there. I mean, it was such a good ball game. Chris and I were as nervous as be sitting over here. But what did you think about the game and how it played out last night? Honestly, I couldn't be more proud because we came that close to beating them in the championship game. And way better than it was last year because last year we got beat really bad. And this year we came out, like, stronger and better than we were last year. And honestly, I think it was just anything could have happened in that last nine seconds. It, it was unreal. By the time I wrote down where Hannah Jones had made a shot, I looked back up and Peyton Oliver's already inside the mm-hmm. three-point line getting ready to take a layup. So I joked with Chris, I don't know how our final call of that game sounded last night. I need to go back and listen just to get some notes. But it was, I mean, it was just a turning point that quick. And a, an outstanding game, you hold a team like Bradley Central to only 37 mm-hmm. points is – Nobody has played them in the district that close in a long time. Um, so that's been a good thing. Good bright spot is you get to host another game here at home on Friday night in the uh, first round of the region. Chance to beat a team and continue this senior year. Mm-hmm. So let's shift focus a little bit. You're going to lead to play soccer. You've been on some outstanding soccer teams here in Ming County, state-bound teams over the last several years. Um Is there any chance you play a little basketball for Coach Rowe down there at Lee, maybe walk on or have an opportunity to play as well, or are you going to stick to soccer? I'm going to stick to soccer (laughs) and just play soccer there. But Hey, they've got a – Lee's got an outstanding soccer program as well. What what are you planning to do as far as studying your major? What are you looking to do there? I'm kind of stuck between either business management or special education. Not quite sure yet. Wherever I think most where it's most needed now is probably which one I'll pick. 
but they both have really great departments there for that. So, If you had to take, I guess, let's talk about both soccer and basketball. What is one defining moment or something from your high school soccer career that you're going to look back on for years to come that it really will be a bright spot, a good memory for you? Definitely just the team atmosphere. Like, we were so close together, and that's what pushed us to make it so far was because we all could play together as a team no matter who we played. And I think that's the same as basketball. Like yesterday, we played so well together, and we were like, we actually have a chance to believe in ourselves that we could have done it, and we got that close. Is there one game that stands out for either sport for you that um, really will be one that you remember? Maybe that Bradley game last night. Definitely the one last night for basketball. And for soccer, I'd probably say it was our game right before we went to state when we lost the region championship and went on or won the – I don't know which one, but we won 6-0 to make it into state when everyone thought we weren't going to make it because we lost. Just kind of surprise everybody with that. And and that's kind of the way basketball works too. I mean, it's one of those nobody – most people would not have said that y'all would have hung around with Bradley Central last night, and you were within an inch off of Jasmine Moses putback from beating them. And so same thing can happen, though, here come Friday night. Um, on this court where you can take care of business and keep advancing through uh, the regional tournament and maybe a chance to play Bradley Central again. Mm-hmm. That would be the icing on the cake. Yes. I would, we would love to call that one again. But Well, Addie, we appreciate it. All the best on Friday night. And congratulations on an outstanding senior year, both Thank in soccer you. and in basketball. And, uh, and apparently Joe Young's trying to bribe uh, Addie to mention that he's the best principal in the world, but we'll, we'll leave that up to debate. But – Addie, we appreciate it, and we'll uh, see you on Friday night. Good luck. Thank Thanks you. for joining us. Addie Smith, an outstanding soccer player and basketball player here for the Lady Cherokees over her time, and just uh, we kind of got her conned into coming over here to talk to us. It's always good when the uh, assistant coach for the girls is keeping the book beside us for the boys yeah. and can help it out, help her out. But Addie will have a great career down at Lee playing soccer, and who knows, Coach Rowe might see some game film wanting to pick her up as a walk on. Chris, you've got some team numbers for us from the yeah, first Yeah, I'll half. speed through them real fast. 13 rebounds for us, seven for them. We were 13 of 27 from the four for 48%. They were six of 19 for 32%. We were six of nine from three for 67%. They were zero for zero. Uh, we were six of nine for 67% from free throw line. They were 10 of 15 for 67%. And we had 11 turnovers to their 12. Tucker Monroe leads all scorers with four of seven from behind the arc. He's got 12. Ty Runyon's got nine. Hayden Smith has six, four for Davion Evans, four for Carson Black, and three for Will Benton. On the other side for Hustling Tigers, it is eight points by Christian Holland. He is six of nine from the free throw line. Eight points by Jaden Jenkins, five for Sexton, and three for Freeman. That rounds out their scoring. Hustling Tigers have the ball out of the quarter break, or out of the halftime break, sorry. And they'll have it in the near corner to Greer. Out there is Thomas, Greer, Jenkins, Holland, and Sexton. Cherokees back out there with Evans, Hester, Runyon, Smith, and Monroe. They're starting five. Three-pointer up. No good there. Rebound pulled down by Hester. First three-pointer in the game for them. Now in transition, Hayden Smith gets a quick layup. That's on the a great pass. catch right there. That's a hard pass. Good feed up the floor by Hester. 7-26. Here in the third quarter to go, and Cherokees extend their lead to 16. Led by as many as 17 in the second quarter. And now it's Greer that hits the deck underneath and turns it over. Goes out of bounds off of Howard. Evans and Monroe in the backcourt. Need to get it across quickly. Got to push it a little bit. It's a 10 second call getting down. Evans gets across there. Now brings it near side of the floor in the front court. Goes around a screen from Monroe. Monroe pops off of it, loses the handle, but regains it back to Evans. Evans in the middle of the lane. Feed to Smith. Now they kick it far side. Hester for three. Off the back iron. Long rebound. Corralled by Holland. Holland going to slow it down right at midcourt. Comes to the right wing to Jenkins. Jenkins is going to throw that into the bleachers on the far side. Cherokees. Looking to go on the road and play the third-seeded Shelbyville team in the opposite district in the first round of the region on Saturday if they can hold this lead. Monroe, oh, oh, Tucker. 15-footer is good for Tucker Monroe. He's got 14. 
Cherokees, two field goals here early. Howard's still looking for their first, and it's an 18-point lead. 42-24. That was a walk. Sexton goes in. Somehow gets the ball to just float through the air. He's got seven. Two minutes played here in the third quarter. Evans across the time stripe. Hands it off to Monroe. Now Monroe guarded closely by Holland. Smith sets a screen for him. Now Thomas kind of shocked shoved off of him, and now he's going to foul Tucker Monroe on the fadeaway. Oh, boy, Tucker. And that one's going to be the foul on Thomas, his second, team first. And Tucker Monroe makes the leaner. He's got 16. 5.55 or 5.51 to play. Cherokee's back in front by 18. Thomas out. 21, Anthony McClendon, the forward into the ball game, And Monroe a chance at an old-fashioned three-point play here. Missed it. That is a rare occurrence for Tucker Monroe. And Ming County trying to get the steal, and now Caden Hester is going to pick up the foul on the loose ball. As he tried to dive for it, and ended up undercutting the Howard player. Oh, that was a foul. First on McMinn County. They kind of were just both going for the ball. I didn't say it was a foul. Greer running the point. He's not had the ball in his hand much this evening. Of course, he had two fouls in the first half, both coming in the second quarter. Sexton goes baseline, goes up strong, and Hayden Smith's going to pick up his third foul as he tried to go up and match him. That's going to be a shooting foul coming for Sexton, looking for his second trip to the line. Sexton with seven points. It's been him and Holland for the most part. Jenkins as well, but Jenkins all came in the first quarter. He makes the first one. 44-27, five and a half to play here in the third quarter. Sexton with eight, along with Holland and Jenkins both at eight. Make that nine now for Sexton. Hester with the ball. Min County, 94 feet to go, and now it's going to be a foul there against Howard. As Hester and it's going to be Jenkins collide on that foul, and that's going to be Jenkins' third foul. My biggest thing is, I mean, I, I'm glad they called it against them, <laughs> but, I mean, how do you decide who that foul is on? Right, both players kind of running – Running free, and the Main County does get the break there. It'll be Evans up the far side by Holland. Holland right there on his hip, no call. Evans all the way in, gets fouled hard, no call. How now Jenkins the world? gets the ball. In transition, Holland is going to take the – well, he's going to get called for the charge. Charge, yeah. And that's going to be the second on Holland. Ty Runyon put his body on the line. Poor Davion Evans just got hammered on that floater in the lane. He's back okay, but would like to be shooting too. Runyon with it. Fake the baseball throw to Monroe. Now gets it back from Evans. Running across the Arrowhead logo at midcourt. Working against Jenkins. Runyon looking up, comes to the left side, hands it off to Evans. Evans circles down the middle of the lane. Layup too uh. strong, comes off the left side. Ball's tipped out, and they're going to get a – Oh, he's on the line. Oh, dude. out of bounds by Davion Evans, so no bucket there. I thought it was going to be a shooting foul, and Davion Evans had made it. Nonetheless, he steps out of bounds off the rebound and turns it over. Greer comes near side to Holland, back to Greer between the circles. Around the screen from Jenkins. Over it goes to Sexton. Back up top is Jenkins, 438 to play, 44-28, Cherokees in front. Right corner, it's Holland, works it back up to the wing. Now sends it over to Sexton. Greer calling for it on the opposite wing, but they keep it on the near side in front of the Howard bench. Now they get it over to Greer, fakes the shot, passes it up to Holland. Holland's three-pointer, no good, but a long rebound is chased down there by Sexton. Got to get the rebounds, especially when the long ones fought back up. Now Greer with it out top of the key. 
Jenkins, quick crossover, floater in the lane, doesn't get the bounce. Caden Hester oh. loses the rebound. Now Jenkins somehow gets the put back to fall. He's got 10. 14 point game, 44 30. Now in transition, Hester gets the layup. Boy, Hester hit the deck. He's got his first points. Now Howard trying to push the pace. Greer slides to a stop. Now Jenkins, top of the key. Corner, three-pointer up by Greer. Comes out. Hester, or sorry, Hayden Smith with a big rebound. Evans crosses midcourt. Subs for both teams at the scorer's table. Runyon. Working against Greer, crosses him up, oh. loses the handle. It looked like a kickball, but Jenkins gets it up in transition. And gets this one to Sexton, who's got 11. 46-32 the score, 3-10 to play. Evans running the point, mounts pass over to Hester on the right wing. Brendan comes across the middle of the lane, but they don't get it to him. Now Monroe catches on the left wing, drives to the baseline. Stuck with it and kicks it back out top of the key to Hester. Evans trying to hand it off to, to Runyon. He does. Smith going to set a high screen for him. Runyon goes left side, feeds it over to Smith. who got bumped. Now they get it out in the near corner to Tucker Monroe. And what's he do? He knocks down the three-pointer. He's got 19 points for Tucker Monroe. 49-32 the score, two and a half to play. 17-point lead for the Cherokees. Top of the key, Holland with it. Backs up, now he tries to attack on the right side. They're gonna get a foul on McMinn County on the floor. And this one's gonna be on Davion Evans, his third, team third. McMinn County's gonna get Spradlin, Peak, and Benton back in for Smith, Evans, and Runyon. Also Freeman back in for Howard. Hustling Tigers ball underneath. Outside it comes to Freeman. Freeman sends it left side over to Sexton, guarded by Peak. Cuts inside. Good straight up defense. Ball's tipped out from Monroe to Benton, but Spradlin able to pick it up from McMinn County. Now needing help. Skip pass near side. It comes to Monroe, crosses midcourt. Good defensive stand by the Cherokees. Monroe left wing, gets it back up to Spradlin. He's going to send it over to Peak on the far side. Now Monroe with it, top of the key. 150 to play here in the third quarter. Feed to the baseline. It's going to be a kickball violation against Howard. So it'll be an inbound coming well underneath. It'll be Monroe to key it in for the Cherokees. Benton gets it in the far corner. Skip pass. Sells out of bounds. Now the official asking if it got tipped, but it didn't. So it'll be Hustling Tigers basketball. And Main County just struggling right there. Didn't have anybody moving, and Will Benton thought he could skip the pass over to Hester, and it sailed on him. 135 to play here in the third quarter. Still a 17-point game. 49-32, Cherokees in front. I've never trailed. Now a missed floater there. Big rebound by Tucker Monroe. Now Hester has it in transition. Hester working against Holland. Feed into Will Benton. Bounce pat. Puts it on the floor and then gets fouled on the layup. He nice almost little, walked. <laughs> well, he took that power dribble. Yeah. Got a little feet happy, but that one's going to be on McClendon. His first, team fourth. Ty Running coming back to the scorer's table. Along with Dupree for Howard. Will Benton just about airballs this one. It touched the bottom of the net, but on the outside of it, Monroe checks out. Runyon back in for him. McClendon out of the ball game as Dupree does return. Benton's second free throw looks much better. He's got four points. It's an 18-point game, 112 to play. Holland with the ball out front. Now he walks with it as it got stuck on his arm, and he knew it as soon as it happened. 105 to play, and we'll see McMinn County will run this clock down a little bit, leading by 18, 50 to 32 in the third quarter. Yep, and that's exactly what he just signaled. Run the four corners. Hester on the far corner. Now Benton, nope, Runyon's going to take it. 15-footer, he rattles it home from Ty Runyon. He's got 11. 
Good open shot by Ty Runyon. It's a 20-point game, the largest of the night. Now up top with it is Jenkins. Men County showing a 2-3 zone now. Benton in the middle of it. Now the feed down low on the baseline to Jenkins and Will Benton. He got him in the face. He's going to get the foul there. Yep, and that's going to be the fourth on Will Benton. And some of that is just maybe the youth on that one as Coach Casey All brings right. him down to this end to talk to him a little bit. Want to get the big block. Oh, yeah. Know. They think they have to smack it for some reason. But missed free throw there by Jenkins, but Will Benton's playing a heck of a game, though. I'll give him that. He's been playing really good. Carson Black will check back in for him as he will sit with four fouls. 34.7 remaining, 52-32, Cherokees in front. Make that 52-33 after Jenkins does make the second one. Runyon with the ball. Runyon guarded closely by Freeman, a battle of the fives. Runyon going to pull up a three, short. Ball goes into the corner, and now Spradlin, huge play, jumps for it and throws it out of bounds off of Jenkins. Good athletic play there by the freshman guard. He'll get to in. Well, Runyon's going to inbound it instead. Good awareness there by Spradlin to keep that on the Cherokees offensive mm-hmm. possession with 18 seconds to play. Peak with it out front. Gets it to Runyon. Runyon guarded by Freeman. Freeman's right there on him. Black trying to set a high screen. Eight seconds to go. Clock now down to five. Runyon trying to take it. Gets fouled on the floor on the drive. And This one's going to be the second on Freeman. Team fifth. And with 4.1 remaining in the third quarter, Coach Casey wants to talk it over. This team up 52 to 33. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Back here at McMinn County High School. Jared Wright, Chris Skidmore. The clock advanced a little bit there, but they're, they're going to fix 4. it. 4.2, I think, is what they said. So it'll be the Cherokees ball inbounding. It'll be Hester. As they are working this out. And right there it goes. That takes more skill than you think, stopping the clock, letting it run, trying to get back to the 4.1. But they do. Hester to inbound it underneath. Cherokees lead it 52-33. to 33. Inbounds comes to Runyon. Gets stuck on the baseline, stripped on the way up, coming away with it is Holland. But they're not going to get the shot off before the third quarter ends, and the Cherokees will have eight more minutes to go before they can get this consolation game win and know where they will play on Saturday evening. We'll be back from Mimmin County High School in 60 seconds. Are you? My thoughts are with you, holding hands with your heart. See you, only through talk and love. You remember how the new love was here to stay. And that was the thing. It, it was kind of a Jekyll and Hyde team because of how they played against McMinn County. They looked so impressive. McMinn, very impressive as well. But then Howard would lose to three teams once 
to McMinn County swept. Now the Cherokees turn it over in transition. Greer gets a hard layup on the right side. That's his first point of the ball game. 52-35. They're under that name Hustle Tigers right now. They're all over the place. Yep. Cherokees outscoring 14 to 8 in the third quarter. Going to need to stay strong here in the fourth to seal this victory. Monroe with it. Hands it off to Hester. Now Evans outside the left wing. Cuts inside. Pass over to Smith. Smith goes baseline. Layup strong on the left side is good. Smith's got 10 points. 54-35. 20-point lead once again. The largest of the ball game. Three-pointer up and no good there by Howard. That was number 11, Jalen Taylor, who's into the ball game. Quick outlet pass up to Hester, far wing. Now feeds it to Runyon. Runyon in the lane is going to get fouled, and let's see, that should be two shots, but as he was going up, that was going to be, nope, they're going to inbound it underneath. Runyon was going for the floater in the lane, but get him on the floor. A minute played here in the fourth quarter. Inbound comes to Monroe, three-pointer. Comes off the left side, and that one was just a tough shot by Tucker Monroe and Hayden Smith. A little ticky tack fell there in transition. And that's his I didn't fourth. Even see it. I'd look down and missed it, but. And so, getting word from. Coach Monroe says he flopped. He flopped. Well, there you go. He got the call, so it worked for him. Hayden Smith's got four, so both big men for McMinn County with four fouls apiece, 6.45 to play. Feed down low there to Sandifer. Oh! Sandifer's going to get the jump ball. McMinn County thought they'd had the steal. So it'll be Howard's ball underneath. Greer. Wow, well, that was an early whistle for a jump ball. Greer's going to look to inbound it underneath. Trying to get it into Sandifer, and Sandifer's, I don't have the heights for Howard, but he's. A good 6'2", 6'3", possibly. Well, Hayden Smith's 6'1", and he's just a little bit taller, so I'd say 6'3", 6'4", maybe. Now it's going to be a hand check foul out front. Now we're getting ticky-tack. I mean, come on. Now that's Runyon's second. Team six. Yeah, I mean, their hands are all over us. So Greer going to set it back in motion. 6'27 to play. Cherokees in front, 54-35. Inbounds comes again. To Sandifer, now Taylor has it. Now gets it to Jenkins. Right wing, cuts inside, and floater no good. Now they're going to get a foul on McMinn County. How? That's going to be on Caden Hester, his fourth. Caden Hester had Sandifer blocked out. But they're going to get the foul on Caden Hester. And Ty running and had the rebound, but it'll be Hester to exit. Trent Peak will check in for him. It'll be a one and one opportunity, and that's got to be number 30 taking the shot. That will be Sandifer at the strike. 6-19 to play. Still 54-35. Sandifer misses it off the left side. Ball's tipped around. It's chased down, and it'll go out of bounds off of McMinn County. They cannot get Howard off of this offensive end of the floor. Will Benton back into the ball game. He'll replace Hayden Smith. And now Greer going to set to inbound it. Now on the opposite side of the bucket. Long inbound comes up top to Taylor. Comes right side to Greer who gets it. Jenkins in the far corner goes baseline. Shovel pass out to Sandiford. Missed shot. This ball sells out of bounds, but Ty Rendon skies for it and gets it out to Tucker Monroe. And finally the Cherokees can get on their offensive end of the floor. Monroe with it, left wing, running out front, under six to play. Now Monroe's just ran over there by Sexton. That's going to be the second on Sexton, team seventh, and so that'll be a one and one for Tucker Monroe, who's got 19 points on the evening. Labu back into the game. He'll replace Sandifer. And Tucker Monroe doesn't miss many free throws, but he missed one earlier on a one and one opportunity. He'll step to the line. Coach Monroe, do y'all, do y'all make him do push-ups at home if he misses free throws? <laughs> 20 <laughs> points as he makes the first one. Now it's a 20-point game again. Coach Lynn Monroe right to our left, keeping the scorebook for the guys and providing us some good insight. Makes both of them. 21-point lead, the largest of the ball game. 
Much different than the first two games. Will Benton, good straight-up defense. All right. Hey, Sexton had to t make a tough shot, and he does. He's got 13. And Will Benton avoids his fifth foul. That's the biggest part of that one. Evans across the time strike, trying to get by Jenkins. Gets to the right block, circles it back out to Trent Peak. Now bounce past to Monroe on the left baseline. Trent Peak gets it back on the left wing. Now up to Runyon from the Arrowhead logo at midcourt. Evans fakes the handoff. Let's Monroe go by him. Now drops it off to Runyon. They're just trying to run some clock. Feed into Will Benton across the lane. Layup miss. Trent Peak battles for an offensive rebound. This one will stay with the Cherokees on the possession arrow. Good rebound there by Trent Peak to come in there and kind of swipe that one away. Trent flies in from all over the place. Will Benton had just like had a good look, but it he kind of sailed too much, and this one's going to be a out of bounds. As number four, Jenkins had tried to steal the inbounds and tiptoed the far sideline, but it'll be a turnover there. 5-0-1 to play, 56-37 the score. Winner of the consolation game will travel to the third-seeded Shelbyville High School for a matchup in the first round of the region on Saturday evening. We'll have that broadcast for you. Loser will go to Coffee County. Runyon out front with it. Monroe and Evans out there with him. They play a little three-man weave between the circles, trying to bleed the clock as it goes down to four and a half. Trying to avenge two regular season losses to Howard. Now Monroe steps Step into, into a it. three. Ooh. Missed it. Trent Peak with another big offensive board. Good rebound by Trent Peak. Is Peak leading the team in rebounds? <laughs> He's very close. There's several of them at three and four by my count. I probably missed a few here and there. Monroe with it. Out front, guarded there by Taylor. Main County trying to keep it. Jenkins almost picks this one off. Evans stays with it from the right elbow, flips it out to Runyon. You know, they caught the foul on us right down there, and they are hands are all over us. Hand check not being called on this end. Clock down to 348. How is that not a foul? And now there's going to be a five-second call? No, it's going to be a timeout by Coach oh. Casey. And so Cherokees are going to talk it over with 346 remaining, leading 56 to 37. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Back here at McMinn County High School, Cherokees get it inbound. Evans with it in the front court. Will Benton going to set a screen for him. Evans double team, still keeps it to the left side of the floor. They're just going to run as much clock God, as they can. His hands are all in. Jenkins well, right there on fans. his hip. Evans goes up, stripped on the way, stays with it somehow. He's been hit three or four times, no call. Running on the far baseline, bounce pass to the high post to Monroe. It's on the floor. Will Benton cleans it up. Now they're going to get a foul Finally. on the floor. Floor and that one's it's about time. It's going to be on Labu. That's going to be the eight, so that should be a one and one for Will Benton. I don't even know where they called that one at. It was Jenkins that was on the floor battling, but Will Benton's going to be at the line. 3.18 to play. Ty, Ty was trying to get some extra points there. He was standing there yeah. like he was Will Benton. <laughs> he was trying to, yeah. He was trying to get there to get his 12th and 13th point. I mean, their hair looks similar, but uh, I don't. Uh, size-wise, I don't think they're going to no. think he's much, Will. Not much confusion on that one. 
Back to a 20 point game, 57 37. Oh, Will, Will he's, Bitt, he's pretty sweet them. from the free throw line, man. So he shoots by well. He's got six points. Maybe he can shoot threes. <laughs> Ties the largest lead of the game at 21. 310 to play. Baseline drive there by Sexton. Hands it back off to Greer in the far corner. Greer cuts inside. Little floater on the lane. Does get the roll up and over the front of the rim. He's got four. He's had a very quiet evening. 255 to play. 19 point game. This is the Cherokee team we've really seen in the rest of the district schedule except for the two games against Howard, which both of those games were close. That's not knocking this Cherokee team and what they did against Howard. It's just they've played a more complete game and dominated like they needed to today. Two and a half to play. Babu guarding Runyon out front. Runyon just keeping it away from him. Runyon... Going to miss watching him play next year. It's been very good. Now he's going to pick up the foul. He's now going to get to go take those free throws he wanted a minute ago. Yeah. Sexton picks up his third. All three of them coming here in the fourth quarter. Runyon at the line. Now number 40, Miles Houston, junior forward, will check in. Caden Hester coming back in for the Cherokees. He'll replace Davion Evans. LeBou will exit for the Hustling Tigers, 221 to play. Runyon's first one, nice looking free throw there. Barely moved the net. He's got 12. The man, we talked about it, does not take a dribble. As soon as he catches, he takes a deep breath, and he missed it, but gets his own rebound, though. Out to Hester, and Cherokees will bring it out front to Runyon. Now to Monroe, near side. 20-point game, 59-39. 2.05 to play. Trent Peak left wing, out to Monroe. Just playing keep away or trying to draw the fouls, at least. Monroe with it inside the arc. Now back outside it comes to Runyon and walks it back up. Jenkins hits the floor. Runyon's still there with it. Gets Will Benton on a roll, and Will Benton's going to get fouled there by Houston. That's going to be two free throws coming for Will Benton. The future for Will Benton is very bright. They've been trying to talk to me to play a football. He'd be good on the football line as well. This is this first free throw. Way Coach Casey is known for developing players. Using him as a freshman is going to be outstanding for the next couple of years. It'll be a couple of substitutions coming in for Howard. 23, Manny Bean, along with number 15, Cam Bell. And McMahon County will get the other senior into the ballgame. Number one, Jacob Wilcox will check in. as a student section fan favorite. They give him a round of applause. So the two seniors out there on the court together for what will likely be the final time unless they can host a sub-state game by winning the region, which is not out of the realm of possibilities. Howard about turns it over on the far side, 140 to play. Will Benton did make. Missed the shot there. Missed it. So we got the rebound. Now Runyon gets it up to Hester. Hester bobbles it, gets it over to Wilcox. Wilcox for three. Drills it. Money, baby. <laughs> Wilcox knocks down the three from the far side, and the crowd goes wild. Outstanding job. That was that's a beautiful shot. Now a right side layup by Jenkins missed. Put back there by Houston. 63-41, a minute to go in this one. Cherokees have dominated from the get-go and not letting up. Wilcox with it in the short corner. Oh! Bayside gets by his defender and gets the layup. <laughs> Jacob Wilcox has five points, and the crowd continues to go wild. Did from, you see that head fake, yes. man? Student section the on their feet. Now a baseline drive. Sexton's reverse layup, no good. Hester has it and 36 seconds to go, and they're up 65-41. A 24-point lead. They give it over to Wilcox, going for another three. Oh! Off the back iron. Falls and can't oh. get his own rebound, but. Good try. Oh, good Jacob hustle, Wilcox kids. has fired this crowd up where well, they've not really needed to be fired up. If that, if that basket there would have went in, uh, this place would have been rough. Oh, yeah. I mean, but Men County is going to get Ty Runyon out and Tucker Monroe out and Ty Runyon, a great 
career for him at McMinn County if this is indeed the last game the Cherokees play at home, along with Caden Hester will check out. They'll get three. Hunter McDonald, the 5'8 sophomore guard in. Spradlin will return. And 24, Landon Shirk, the 5'11 freshman guard, will check in as well. Spradlin almost has the steal. No, it They'll is him to save it. Jacob to dunk one. <laughs> if they can get the steal, there's only eight <laughs> seconds left. Jenkins going to take a three near the buzzer. Missed it. Will Benton skies for the rebound. And McDonald's going to run the clock out, and the Cherokees do what they need to do. They have punched their ticket to play Shelbyville. And they send these two seniors off on likely the last time on this home floor in true outstanding fashion as they pick up the victory 65-41 to here in the District 5-4A consolation matchup. The number one seed beats the number two seed. And it punches their ticket to play the three seed. Howard will be on the road at Coffee County who won the District 6 action. Cherokees get their 21st win of the season. Howard picks up their ninth loss of the season. That is the 10th win for the Cherokees on this floor this year as well. Let's take a two-minute break, and then we'll be back with some final stats and interview with Coach Casey. 